What's up, everyone? My name is Frank. Hope I'm having a great day today. I am excited for today's video. I'll be reviewing the most anticipated controller released by Sony, the PlayStation 5 DualSense Edge controller. This is Sony's first crack at creating a top-tier pro esports controller. So let's see if the controller lives up to all the hype and if it's worth the buy. As always, I'm in timestamps down below in the description so y'all can't skip your part of the video that you want to see first. Today's video is made possible by Mega Mods. They were able to pre-order and get me this controller ASAP. A huge shout out to them. Thank you very much. They create fully customizable top tier modded and esports controllers. If you're looking to purchase one of their products, make sure to click on my affiliate link found down below in the description to save a couple bucks on your next purchase. Guys, I think it's time we dive into an unboxing. The controller's priced at 200 USD or 250 Canadian, comes secured in a clamshell case with decent weight. The material used for the shell is a hard plastic which is soft to the touch. The PlayStation logo as you can see is glossy. They've also added the PlayStation logo on the zipper, nice attention to detail right there. The bottom shell is also made with the same hard plastic which is soft to the touch with the PlayStation logo up at the top. You'll see a metal key loop. You'll be able to attach it to your belongings while in transport. Here is a rubberized flap which is velcroed in. When brought down, reveals the controller. You're able to charge it while it's in transport. Very nice feature that they have added. Let's go ahead and open up the case and reveal what we have inside. The control and components are nicely in place, not dislodged, and definitely secure while in transport. At the top of the case, we have the 9 foot long steel braided USB type C charging cable in a mesh pouch, rubberized material used to keep the controller secure. If you scan that QR code, it will pop up the user manual for the controller. Setting the controller to the side at the bottom of the case, nicely shaped and contoured to accommodate the controller, nice materials used. The components are housed in a rubberized material which is soft to the touch. The paddles are indeed metal which is very nice they feel great and they are labeled on the case you'll notice in the middle there's an open slot this is to house an additional thumbstick module you have the locking mechanism and the additional thumbsticks all in all a very well built case attention to detail is superb and i like to see the premium materials being used the controller is sleek and slightly heavier than the original with some premium design changes a high gloss black faceplate directional pad buttons they blacked out the d-pad and they added the playstation symbols to it which you're able to feel they added a high gloss black line which accentuates the back of the controller they rounded off the bottom of the controller and they added grips to the inner edge of the controller they've also added grips to the triggers in the form of playstation symbols amazing all these design changes make all the difference on a controller like this. The locking mechanism is used to secure the charging cable onto the controller while gaming with the use of these teeth that slide out and grip into the controller. Top of the lock has some foam padding. When we open up the latch, there's additional foam padding as well as a symbol showing how the USB cable slides into place. The USB cable is branded with the PlayStation logo, very nice touch. Slide in the cable, bring down the latch till it clicks, align the two ports, Press in firmly and make sure to press up the lock button until it locks into place. You'll hear it and it is secured in place and will not get dislodged while gaming. Trigger stops are key to improving reaction time on the triggers as they don't need to be pressed all the way down to activate. There are three different settings. Setting one default, setting number two is a half click, and setting number three is a short click. A very useful feature, but keep in mind when using the trigger stops, it will turn off the haptic feedback in the triggers. Having back buttons is a must on any esports controller as it improves reaction time and movement in competitive play. We have two styles to choose from. On my left, a half dome shape, which is universal. You could put on either side of the controller. And on my right, a lever style back button, which is directional. So make sure you are installing it correctly. Simply align the tabs. Press it into place, there's a magnet that will hold on to it and secure it in. Both of these styles feel great to use, They're very ergonomic and very tactile. The lever style follows the contour of the controller and lays perfectly where your fingers rest on the controller, easy to use, whereas the dome shape is tucked out of the way so there won't be any accidental presses, you'll have to reach out to press the paddle. To remove a back button, lift up from the edge and pull out. 
There are two alternate thumbstick designs, which is great to accommodate different styles of play. Both are dome shaped, one's regular height and the other's a medium height. To remove, simply pull up on the thumbstick, grab the thumbstick that you want to install, align the tabs and press down firmly till it clicks into place. Stick drift has plagued everyone after many hours of gaming. Now you no longer have to throw out your controller. We have the ability to swap out thumbstick modules. There's a release tab on the back of the controller, slide it to the side, the faceplate will pop off. You will see two metal levers on either side, flip up the metal lever to disengage the thumbstick module, pull it out, replace it with the new one, press in the module, then bring back down that metal lever. Make sure to put back the faceplate. You're able to buy replacement thumbstick modules for $20. The add in new function buttons allows you to further customize the settings of your controller and create different profiles, which can be activated on the fly. The function buttons are easy to use and well-placed. Simply press down on a function button and tap one of the four action buttons to activate one of your four saved profiles or function button left right on the d-pad to adjust audio balance or up down on the d-pad to adjust headset volume keep in mind your headset doesn't need to be plugged into your controller to utilize that function when connecting the controller to your console for the very first time you are greeted by a welcome menu which highlights the features of the controller when pressing either of the function buttons a pop-up menu shows which functions we are able to do Next, it's going to guide us to create our first custom profile, starting off by giving it a profile name and then customizing the button assignments. You're almost able to customize any button on the controller as well as disable it. Make sure to click apply once you're happy with your configuration. Next, moving on to adjust stick sensitivity and dead zones. There's plenty of customization options in this section, which is great. Moving on to adjust trigger dead zones followed by a vibration intensity and trigger effect intensity. There is plenty of customizations to do on this controller. Once you're happy with your settings, make sure to save it to the appropriate function slot. When activating your desired profile, the controller's light bar will show which profile you are choosing. If you are wanting to get back to this page to readjust profiles, you can find it in the settings accessory section on the PlayStation. I have to say I am beyond impressed with Sony's design. They have taken the standard PlayStation 5 controller and brought it to a whole nother a level. This controller is second to none. Priced in and around what the other esports controllers are selling for, but they kept those amazing features, the adaptive triggers, the haptic feedback, the rumbles, the speaker port, the microphone port, but they enhanced it. They added additional grip to the inner side of the controller, additional grip to the triggers, they reshaped the bottom of the controller, making it that much more comfortable to use, more ergonomic. They added a whole locking mechanism for the steel braided charging cable. They added trigger stops with three different positions to choose from. The ability to swap out thumbsticks for different heights and styles. They added back buttons, two different styles to choose from, both ergonomically placed, easy to use, and very responsive. You have the ability to swap out thumbstick mechanisms and the added function buttons, allowing us to customize the settings of the controller, customize our own profiles, allowing us to turn on profiles while in game and adjust audio settings all on the fly while in game. This controller has all the features that you'd want and expect in a eSports controller. Sony has delivered the only negative have to say about this controller is the battery life i am seeing around five to five and a half hours per charge keep in mind i have my haptic feedback and my rumble set to off if you have everything turned on you'll see around four four and a half hours per charge this is half when compared to the standard playstation 5 controller which is around 10 to 11 hours of battery life yes they did include a smaller battery with this controller but they had to make room for the additional components and features that they added. Is this a deal breaker? No, it's not because most competitive and pro players are going to play wired anyway. So if you're on the fence about that, don't worry. I don't see it as a deal breaker. What I will say is if you are in the market to purchase a full on esports controller loaded with amazing customizable features, I highly recommend 
the PlayStation 5 DualSense Edge controller. You will not be disappointed with this controller. This controller truly is a top tier elite pro esports controller. And there you have it, everything you need to know about the new PlayStation 5 DualSense Edge controller. If you have any questions about what I spoke about in today's video, I'll be leaving a link down below to join the Mega Mods forum. Hop in and ask your questions. Myself and Mega Mods will be there to assist you. Also, feel free to leave a comment down below in this video and hit me up on social media. It is always a pleasure helping you guys out and interacting with my community. You guys are all amazing everyone if you all enjoyed watching this video make sure to smash that like button leave a comment down below and share with your friends greatly appreciated if you are new to my channel check me out for the very first time make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with my content and don't forget to press that bell to become part of my notification squad you guys are all amazing huge shout out to the sparrow troopers to the sponsors to the new subscribers you guys are all amazing everyone have a great rest of your day or night whenever you're watching this video and i'll see you all on the next one. Peace.